In this video, I'm going to explain what the concept of a marginal probability means in the case of continuous random variables, and I'm also going to explain how you can work it out from a probability density function. So the example which I'm going to talk about here is the example whereby we have a PDF, which is a function of the height of an individual and the weight of an individual, which I'm going to call W. And as I've spoken about before, we could represent this PDF now as a sort of volume whereby the height of the volume actually represents the PDF value. And we might imagine that there's some sort of cone shape here across both height and weight, which looks something that I'm drawing here. Okay, so this is our sort of PDF here. So our PDF here is a function of, or I'm going to call it F, of both the height and the weight of an individual. Okay, so let's now think about how we might represent this in sort of other ways other than 3D because it's a little bit complicated to keep redrawing this thing. So what I'm going to imagine we could do is if we were to look down on this image from above, then what we could do is we could sort of draw the contour lines on a sort of axis across both weight or sorry height and weight of an individual. And what we might suppose is that we could draw, well, we might suppose that the height and the weight of an individual are quite highly correlated. So the contour lines might look something like those which I'm drawing on now, whereby there sort of is a strong degree of orientation sort of along the y equals x line here. So we can imagine that our contours might look something like those which I'm drawing. Okay, so this is a sort of representation of our PDF in contour form. But how can we use this PDF to help us to get a marginal probability here? Well, the way we can sort of think about it is that if we wanted to get the marginal probability, so let's call it f of h, then remember what we had to do in the discrete form. We had to sum over all possible values of the other discrete random variable. And essentially that's all we have to do now in the continuous case, but in the continuous case, a sum is actually an integral. But other than thinking about it like an integral, essentially what we're doing is that for every value of height, we could sort of slice through this image. And so if we start up here at the top, then we could slice through and we could sort of measure what is the length of that line, sort of taking into account the fact that we're actually having to go up and down. So if we do that then, what we can then do is we can think about the length of this line is representing the marginal probability of, or the marginal probability density rather, of a particular height. So we keep this axis the same now and we just slice through our image. So sl stop us starting at the top here, we get a relatively sort of low value for the length of this line because there's not much contour, it has to go up. So the PDF is still pretty close to zero. Then if we imagine slicing through this sort of contour here slightly further down. Now we're having to walk up the hill. We're starting to sort of walk up the hill perhaps somewhere like here and we go up and then we have to come back down again. So the PDF is starting to get a little bit higher. And then what we could imagine doing is that this would get higher and higher until we reach the sort of center of our image here or the center of our contour here, which would represent the highest marginal probability value. Uh, in terms of height. So this sort of image which I've drawn here, or this graph rather that I've drawn here, this represents the marginal probability, or the marginal probability density rather, of attaining a certain height. And just in mathematical form, just so we know exactly what we've done here, essentially to get just a function of h, or a probability density which is defined irrespective of weight, all we needed to do is we needed to integrate across from all the possible values of weight, our original two-dimensional probability density function. So we integrated our function of height and weight across all values of weight. And this really is just the continuous analog of what we did in a discrete case. In a discrete case, to get the marginal probability of a certain random variable x taking on a certain value, then all we needed to do is we needed to sum across all values of y across the probability of that value x across y taking on all potential values. So the integral here is just a continuous analog of the sum. 
Okay, so we worked out the marginal probability across the height of an individual. How do we do the same across the weight? Well, we can think about it pictorially as being represented by some axes, which I'm just drawing below our image. But now what we're doing is we are slicing through across sort of vertically. So now if I pick a different color to do that, what we're actually doing is we're slicing through our image and then what we're doing, actually I'm not too happy with that color, if I use this color, slicing through our image and then basically what we're doing is we're measuring how long this line would represent. Because remember what we're actually having to do is we're having to go up our three-dimensional shape and then sort of down it. And yeah, so what we're doing is we're continually slicing through this and we're measuring the length of this line. So as we go through, we can see that that's going to correspond to actually walking up and then walking down this sort of hill here. And so what we're doing is we're measuring the length of each of these contours and that allows us to draw a PDF or a marginal PDF, which is going to look something like this, which I'm drawing here. So again, it's going to be peaked towards the center of our contour here because this central contour here corresponds to walking up and then walking down the highest hill. So this is now the marginal probability density across weight of individuals.